Welcome to our in-depth documentary on the pivotal leaders of World War II. These figures played crucial roles in shaping the conflict's trajectory and its aftermath. Their decisions, strategies and alliances left indelible marks on history. Join us as we explore their lives, leadership and the significant events that defined their legacies. Through detailed comparisons, we will understand how their actions influenced the war and the world we live in today. Our journey begins with Winston Churchill, whose early life was marked by a privileged upbringing and a distinguished military career. These experiences laid the foundation for his political ascent, leading to his role as Prime Minister during World War II. Churchill's tenacity and oratory skills were pivotal in rallying the British people during the Battle of Britain. During the Battle of Britain, Churchill's leadership was crucial. His stirring speeches and unyielding resolve galvanized the British people, inspiring them to withstand relentless aerial bombardments. His strategic decisions and unwavering confidence in victory became symbols of hope and resilience. Churchill's collaborations with other Allied leaders were instrumental in shaping the war's outcome. His relationships with Franklin D. Roosevelt and Joseph Stalin, though complex, facilitated coordinated efforts against the Axis powers. These alliances underscored the importance of unity and diplomacy in achieving common goals. After the war, Churchill's influence extended beyond his tenure as Prime Minister. His vision for a united Europe and warnings about the Iron Curtain shaped post-war policies. His legacy as a stalwart defender of democracy and freedom continues to resonate in contemporary political discourse. The collaboration between Churchill and Roosevelt was pivotal in the Allied victory during World War II. Their ability to work together, despite differences, and their shared vision for a peaceful post-war world laid the foundation for the United Nations and lasting global peace. Their friendship and leadership remain a powerful testament to what can be achieved when great minds unite for a common cause. Despite their collaboration, they had their disagreements. Roosevelt and Stalin pressured Churchill to open a second front in Western Europe sooner, while Churchill preferred campaigns in North Africa and Italy first. They also differed on post-war plans. Churchill wanted to maintain the British Empire and a balance of power in Europe, whereas Roosevelt supported decolonization and self-determination. The friendship Churchill and Roosevelt was warm and genuine. They exchanged numerous letters, often with humor and mutual respect. They met several times during the war, including the pivotal Yalta Conference in 1945, where they, along with Stalin, discussed the post-war reorganization of Europe. As we delve deeper into the remarkable partnership between Winston Churchill and Franklin D. Roosevelt, let's explore some fascinating and lesser-known aspects of their relationship. They communicated extensively through encrypted messages, codenamed Churchill-Roosevelt Correspondence. This secure and private channel allowed them to discuss crucial strategies and plans without the risk of interception. Roosevelt often called Churchill Winnie, a term of endearment that reflected their close personal bond. Churchill, in turn, referred to Roosevelt as FDR, a sign of the mutual respect and friendship that underpinned their professional relationship. Churchill was known for his eccentric habits, such as working from his bed and dictating while taking long baths. These idiosyncrasies were part of his unique style, which he maintained even during the intense pressures of wartime leadership. These personal quirks and challenges make their accomplishments even more remarkable, highlighting the human side of these iconic leaders and the strength of their partnership during one of history's most challenging periods. Yesterday morning at 2.41 a.m., at General Eisenhower's headquarters, General Jodl, the representative of the German High Command, and of Grand Admiral Dönitz, the designated head of the German state, signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Forces and simultaneously to the Soviet High Command. Uh, hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight, Tuesday the 8th of May.
we may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing. Today is victory in Europe Day. Tomorrow will also be victory in Europe Day. But let us not forget for a moment the toils and efforts that lie ahead. Japan, with all her treachery and greed, remains unsubdued. The injuries she has inflicted upon Great Britain, the United States and other countries, and her detestable cruelties call for justice and retribution. We must now devote all our strength and resources to the completion of our tasks, both at home and abroad. Advance Britannia, long live the cause of freedom. God save the King. Next, we turn to Franklin D. Roosevelt, the 32nd President of the United States, served an unprecedented four terms from 1933 to 1945. His leadership during World War II was marked by strategic foresight, decisive actions, and a commitment to the principles of democracy and freedom. Franklin D. Roosevelt's rise from New York governor to U.S. president marked a significant transformation in American politics. His charismatic leadership and progressive vision resonated with a nation grappling with economic hardship, ultimately leading to his election as President of the United States in 1932. For the past four months, we have been engaged in an inspiring campaign. And now at its close, I want to say a word of appreciation through the news screen to my many friends, my countless number of loyal supporters, a word of appreciation for all of the splendid work that they have done. And I wish it were possible for me to extend this word of thanks to each one of them individually. Roosevelt's New Deal policies brought sweeping reforms aimed at revitalizing the American economy during the Great Depression. Through initiatives like social security and public works programs, FDR sought to provide relief, recovery and reform fundamentally altering the relationship between the federal government and its citizens. Even before the United States entered the war, Roosevelt recognized the threat posed by the Axis powers. In March 1941, he signed the Lend-Lease Act, allowing the US to supply military aid to allied nations like Britain, the Soviet Union and China. This act was crucial in sustaining the Allies' war efforts before America's direct involvement. The attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, was a turning point. The next day, Roosevelt addressed Congress, famously calling it a date which will live in infamy. His speech galvanized the nation, and Congress declared war on Japan, bringing the United States fully into World War II. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Roosevelt made several strategic decisions that were crucial to the Allied victory. In 1941, he and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill crafted the Atlantic Charter, a visionary document that emphasized self-determination, economic cooperation and lasting peace for the post-war world. Roosevelt also played a pivotal role in forming the Grand Alliance, bringing together the United States, the United Kingdom and the Soviet Union. This alliance was vital in bridging ideological divides to unite against the common enemy. One of the most significant decisions was the meticulous planning of the D-Day invasion in 1944. Roosevelt, along with Churchill and their military leaders, orchestrated Operation Overlord, the massive Allied invasion of Nazi-occupied France. This operation was a turning point in the war, marking the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany. Roosevelt also transformed the American home front. He mobilized the nation's industrial capacity, turning the United States into the arsenal of democracy. American factories produced vast quantities of war materials, from planes and tanks to ships and ammunition, 
supporting not only US forces but also those of the Allies. His leadership was evident at several key wartime conferences. At the Casablanca Conference in 1943, Roosevelt and Churchill agreed on the principle of unconditional surrender for the Axis powers, aiming for a total victory without negotiated peace. Later that year at the Tehran Conference, Roosevelt met with Churchill and Stalin to discuss military strategy and post-war plans, laying the groundwork for future cooperation. Despite his declining health, Roosevelt played a crucial role at the Yalta Conference in 1945. His efforts were instrumental in negotiating the post-war reorganization of Europe, including the establishment of the United Nations, which aimed to promote peace and prevent future conflicts. Roosevelt's vision extended beyond military victory. He was a champion of humanitarian efforts and sought to create a world order based on peace and cooperation. His advocacy for the United Nations aimed to prevent future conflicts and promote international dialogue and understanding. The death of Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1945 came as a profound shock to the nation and the world. His passing left a leadership void during a critical juncture in the war, profoundly impacting the Allied forces and shaping the final stages of World War II. Franklin D. Roosevelt's influence on World War II was profound and far-reaching. His strategic decisions, leadership in forming the Grand Alliance, and vision for a peaceful post-war world left an indelible mark on history. FDR's legacy is a testament to the power of determined and visionary leadership during one of humanity's darkest hours. Words are inadequate. The world knows it has lost a heroic champion of justice and freedom. In his infinite wisdom, Almighty God has seen fit to take from us a great man who loved and was beloved by all humanity. Joseph Stalin's early Bolshevik activities were marked by his fierce dedication to the revolutionary cause. He played a crucial role in establishing Soviet power, often through ruthless means. His ascent to power was characterized by a combination of political savvy and brutal purges, solidifying his control over the Communist Party and the Soviet Union. Stalin's early involvement in revolutionary activities included organizing strikes, spreading propaganda, and participating in bank robberies to fund the Bolshevik movement. His commitment to the cause caught the attention of Vladimir Lenin, the leader of the Bolsheviks. By 1912, Stalin had risen through the ranks to become a member of the Bolshevik Central Committee. Vladimir Lenin, recognizing Stalin's organizational skills and unwavering loyalty, appointed him to several key positions. Stalin's role as Commissar of Nationalities during the Russian Civil War allowed him to demonstrate his administrative abilities and consolidate power within the party. Once in power, Stalin implemented a series of radical policies aimed at transforming the Soviet Union into a modern industrial state. His five-year plans focused on rapid industrialization and collectivization of agriculture, which, while achieving significant economic progress, also led to widespread famine and suffering. To eliminate any opposition, Stalin initiated the Great Purge in the late 1930s, targeting party members, military leaders, and ordinary citizens. Millions were executed or sent to labor camps in a climate of fear and repression. Stalin's leadership during World War II was marked by both strategic blunders and decisive victories. The initial surprise of Operation Barbarossa the German invasion of the Soviet Union was a severe setback. However, Stalin's ability to mobilize resources and inspire Soviet resistance led to key victories, most notably at the Battle of Stalingrad. The Red Army's advance into Berlin in 1945 solidified Stalin's position as a central figure in the Allied victory. As the Nazi threat loomed over Europe, the necessity for an alliance between the Soviet Union, Great Britain, and the United States became undeniable. Despite profound ideological differences, Stalin, Churchill, and Roosevelt joined forces, forming what became known as the Grand Alliance. This coalition was a marriage of convenience, driven by a shared goal, the defeat of the Axis powers. Their first major meeting took place in 1943 at the Tehran Conference. 
Here, Stalin, Churchill and Roosevelt convened to discuss military strategy and the future of the post-war world. Stalin, always the pragmatist, pushed hard for a second front in Western Europe to relieve the Soviet forces bearing the brunt of the Nazi onslaught. His persistence paid off, leading to the D-Day invasion in 1944, a turning point in the war. Yet behind the scenes, their interactions were fraught with tension and suspicion. Churchill, a staunch anti-communist, harbored deep mistrust towards Stalin. He was wary of Soviet intentions in Eastern Europe and often took a confrontational stance. In contrast, Roosevelt approached Stalin with a more conciliatory attitude, believing that maintaining a good relationship with the Soviet leader was crucial for a stable post-war order. This divergence in approach sometimes led to friction between the Western allies themselves. In February 1945, the leaders met again at the Yalta Conference, a crucial moment in determining the shape of the post-war world. The discussions at Yalta were intense, covering the reorganization of Europe, the establishment of the United Nations, and the fate of Germany. Stalin was adamant about securing Soviet influence over Eastern Europe, which he viewed as essential for Soviet security. Churchill and Roosevelt, while seeking Soviet cooperation, were deeply concerned about Stalin's expansionist ambitions. Despite these concerns, compromises were made and agreements were reached, reflecting the delicate balance of power and mutual suspicion that characterized their relationship. The dynamics between the three leaders were further complicated by the differences in their personalities and leadership styles. Stalin's ruthless pragmatism and strategic shrewdness contrasted sharply with Churchill's bold rhetoric and Roosevelt's charismatic diplomacy. These differences sometimes led to clashes, but also underscored the unique strengths each leader brought to the alliance. Stalin's relationships with Churchill and Roosevelt were marked by a blend of strategic collaboration and deep-seated suspicion. Their interactions, shaped by a mix of pragmatism, diplomacy and personal dynamics, were crucial in shaping the course of World War II and laying the groundwork for the geopolitical landscape that would follow. As the war ended and the world transitioned to a new era, the legacies of these leaders forged in the crucible of war would continue to influence global politics for decades to come. In the post-war era, Stalin expanded Soviet influence across Eastern Europe, setting the stage for the Cold War. He established a network of satellite states, creating a buffer zone against potential Western aggression. His legacy is a contentious mix of brutal repression and significant contributions to the Soviet Union's emergence as a global superpower. After exploring the pivotal roles played by the leaders of the USSR, the UK and the United States during World War II, we turn our focus to another key figure. Charles de Gaulle. A man of distinguished military background, de Gaulle's leadership of the Free French Forces was instrumental in France's resistance against Nazi occupation. Charles de Gaulle, born in Lille, France in 1890, had a career marked by both military and intellectual rigor. His experiences in World War I and subsequent military roles shaped his strategic thinking and leadership qualities. When France fell to Nazi Germany in 1940, de Gaulle refused to accept defeat. Fleeing to London, he made a historic broadcast on June 18, 1940, calling on the French people to resist the occupation and join him in continuing the fight. His broadcasts from London, known as the Appeal of June 18, became a beacon of hope and unity for the French resistance. De Gaulle's leadership was vital in keeping the spirit of French resistance alive, he organized the Free French Forces, rallying French soldiers, expatriates and colonial troops to continue the struggle against the Axis powers. His efforts ensured that France remained a visible and active participant in the Allied campaign, even as the country was under German control. De Gaulle's relationship with other Allied leaders was complex but crucial. His interactions with Winston Churchill were marked by mutual respect, albeit with significant tension. Churchill supported de Gaulle as the leader of the Free French, recognizing the importance of maintaining French resistance. However, their relationship was often strained by de Gaulle's unyielding independence and refusal to compromise on French sovereignty.
De Gaulle's connection with Franklin D. Roosevelt, on the other hand, was more contentious. Roosevelt was skeptical of de Gaulle's legitimacy and preferred to deal with other French leaders initially. It was only after recognizing de Gaulle's significant influence and the Free French Forces' contributions that Roosevelt began to offer more substantial support. This relationship underscored the complexities of Allied diplomacy, where strategic necessity often clashed with political preferences. One of de Gaulle's key achievements was his role in the liberation of Paris in August 1944. As Allied forces advanced towards the French capital, de Gaulle insisted that French troops lead the liberation efforts. He was determined that France should be seen as liberating itself, and his strategic acumen ensured that French forces played a prominent role in the city's liberation. This was a powerful symbol of national pride and restored French sovereignty. After the war, de Gaulle's influence extended beyond the battlefield. He was instrumental in the political reconstruction of France, advocating for significant reforms to stabilize and rebuild the nation. His vision culminated in the establishment of the Fifth Republic in 1958, which he designed to provide greater executive power and political stability. De Gaulle became the first president of the Fifth Republic, shaping modern French governance and leaving a lasting legacy on French politics. As we reflect on the leaders of World War II, Charles de Gaulle stands out not only for his military and political achievements, but also for his unwavering dedication to his country's independence and strength. His interactions with Churchill, Roosevelt and Stalin highlight the intricate and often challenging nature of Allied relationships, yet they also underscore the essential unity that ultimately led to victory.